Mm -hmm. There's Cheryl. There's Sharon. Good morning, Cheryl. Good morning. We kind of started without you. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> You're fine. It was, we just were doing some Thanksgiving. Just we're sharing what we're thankful what we're for. We're thankful for. Yes. So how are you guys doing? Oh, and Cheryl, Her Helen's birthday is on the 25th. Oh, happy birthday. She didn't, tell, she didn't tell us what birthday she's celebrating. So we just <laughs> say oh, let's, let's, let's put it this way. I'm getting all kinds of uh, hits from insurance companies. <laughs> 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 okay. The Medicare kind. Okay. Does that tell you anything? Yeah. You hands with a five? <laughs> you think? <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy birthday. Thank you. I never knew there were so many insurance companies. Oh, it's crazy. Just think how much money they could save if they would quit sending out all of those. Uh, the phone calls. The phone uh, never ran. The phone anything. calls and the, and the letters and everything in the mail. Yeah. I mean, if you if you ever need me, make sure you always leave a message. I may be standing over my answering machine. <laughs> <laughs> well, the mailbox is the same way now. That's all the mail we ever get is either yeah. Medicare stuff or political ads. Yeah. Uh -huh. Excuse me for a minute. You guys go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Look at that. Look at that lovely picture there. <laughs> <laughs> but he's not moving. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't figured out how to do that yet. You got any announcements for us, Cheryl? Um, well, I was talking to Regan and um, where the place that they've reserved, you know, our goal is to one day be back together. We miss being back together um so uh, but she said that right now the place that they have at the co-op will house you know most of us safely you know allow us to social distance so keep that in mind however during this covid deal we do need to um offer the online uh because Pray that it doesn't happen, but you know, even my Jack has been on quarantine for this is day 10, and he's got four more days. So, you know, we've not been allowed to go anywhere. And uh, so that can happen to any as any of us at any time. And certainly pray that nobody gets COVID. Uh, but anyway, offering and, and then we have uh, those that are, you know, super fragile or, or you know. Right want to get out for example um i can't see bill henshaw right you know we do have those that ju just do not want to get out during this time so we want to make sure that we accommodate so we will try to always offer um the zoom and we appreciate carol you stepping <laughs> that's, that's another problem is we've got to have two teachers and uh, we just appreciate everybody that stepped up to do that um, and, and we also appreciate Lincoln. I'm, I know, I'm sorry he's not on here, but I appreciate Lincoln because he set it all up for us. So, um, and as long as we're doing Zoom, he doesn't have that option, he said, of going to see, you know, everyone at, um, well, right now at the co-op. So we appreciate his dedication uh, right. and set up. So anyway, any comments to that? Well, as far as Christmas goes, I don't know, you know, it, um, they're talking about the county's numbers are spiking up mm -hmm. and that's really going to severely impact mm -hmm. our whatever services we were planning to have uh, right. for Christmas mm -hmm. and, and all those activities. So I, mm -hmm. we're just going to have to play it by ear. We're just all going to have to be flexible. Mm -hmm. I wonder I wonder if it would be safer for us to have a Zoom Christmas party. <laughs> <laughs> yes, unfortunately, I think that's going to uh, have to be what we offer. 
But yep. we also need to find a way for the people that don't even want to, don't, don't know how to use the computer, don't want to use Zoom, figure out a way to get them involved. Right. Do we know, do we know who those people are? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, okay. I've tried to call people, um, you know, just that we haven't seen in the last, uh, you know, whether it's been on Zoom or in person, uh, but- Plug it, plug them in. But they are folks that like exactly what you said. They hate the computer. They, they're they not, you know, they just, that they're not comfortable and they don't like it. And those are the ones uh, too that are also going, a lot of those, in fact, uh, this morning, Charlie and Chris, they've not been to anything and or attended anything online, but, you know, they were going to the park. They hate technology. They just, they don't like it. And, and that's okay. Um, so yes, I've tried to call and check in with folks and a lot of them are just, they're, they're not technology people and they're not comfortable going out. So unfortunately it's this time now. And you know what, my biggest prayer is let's get through this and everybody be okay. That's what matters. Yeah. That's what matters. So, um, and if people are not comfortable meeting in person by all means, Again, we're going to always offer, I, I can see us always offering um, the, this Zoom or some kind right. of, right. for those people that are just not comfortable yet. So anything else? Um, I had a message during church from David Van Landingham. Um, it's just saying he wishes he could be here for Sunday school. Um, but wanted to thank the empty nesters for all their love and support. Um, so I'm assuming he's still, uh, he's still with one of his girls, right? Um, yes. That's what I assumed. He's, he's with the one in Tennessee. <laughs> the one in Tennessee. That's what I thought. Oh, so. I and if, if y'all think it's appropriate when he does come back home, I thought maybe we would do even a couple of meals a week or then are y'all okay with that? Yes. Yeah, I think a couple of meals a week will be good. Yeah, his daughters, both of them uh, were just afraid. They, they just said, we dread the day that he goes home without her. And some of you have been in that position. They said, we dread the day that he goes home without her. You know, no, no companionship and, and, you know, no reason to fix dinner or whatever. So um, I said, don't worry. We'll, we'll be there for, for support. Yeah. Uh, but if y'all are okay with that, um, I'll, yeah. I'll can make sure that we're, you know, get that set up when he gets back. Because yeah. he wasn't coming back till after next week, right? Right. So that was my understanding. Day. Anybody else have a different understanding? That's, that's what I heard as well. That's what I understood. Mm -hmm. They were going to get him through this first thing. So. Yeah. Oh, that's hard. They took him to the Grand Old Opry this week. Oh, cool. Very spaced out. <laughs> That's all right. The yeah. place is big enough to space out. Yeah. Carol Madsen, how's Gary? Gary's here. We're just having computer issues this morning. I think that Gary's on. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there he is. Gary. I Gary, can't get a Christmas right into it. Yep. Oh, yeah. Christmas tree up. Wow, looks good. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Here's, David. here's David. Yeah, the granddaughters David, came David. over and yeah. decorated. Morning, Thank oh, nice. Oh. The granddaughters came over and got y'all all done? Uh, yes. <laughs> mm. yeah. See, we had a Christmas elf come by on Monday and decorated our house too. Oh, cool. <laughs> nice. Isn't it nice to have that happen? <laughs> that is wonderful. Do, do, do you have a contact number? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was going to put mine up, but now the kids from Newton are not coming and so I'm not going to put it up. My daughter and her sons are coming and my daughter and her family are coming um, but the ones in Newton are not coming because they have had four cases at her school. She's not been around them but they were just concerned that they shouldn't come so did you find them? Uh, did, did you all do prayer concerns already? 
No. Not just still working on wandering in there. We, you have one, Carolyn? Yeah. Um, most of you saw that uh, one of my first cousins passed away this week. Um, this is um, my cousin Pam on, uh, this is my dad's side. Uh, Pam and her sister Sherry uh, live in Paducah. And whenever we go to Missouri, we always stop and spend the night in Paducah. So we get to see Pam and Sherry. So that's been a good way for, uh, for us to keep up with them over, over the years. And Pam woke up sick last Sunday, went to the hospital Monday, was on a ventilator by Monday night and died early mm -hmm. Tuesday morning. Oh, so, wow. you know, really mm -hmm. fast. Mm -hmm. Well, COVID? the other cousin, Sherry, yeah. Her husband is in the hospital with COVID now. Uh, so Sherry is just a mess. Um, understandably, you know, she can't be with Danny and she, she couldn't go to the funeral yesterday because she's had COVID also. So just, you know, really, really, really sad. So let's just please pray that Danny improves quickly. Uh, the last thing I heard yesterday was that his oxygen levels were going up. Um, I haven't heard anything back from Sherry yet this morning to see how Danny's doing today. But, and the two families weren't in contact. So COVID must be rampant in Paducah because you know, they, they weren't together. My mm. niece the schools in Tennessee have been closed for two weeks. The boys have been home for two weeks. Uh, well, Pam was substitute teaching. But Sherry does. Sherry and Danny don't have anything to do with schools. So, you know, who knows how they, they got it. Mm -hmm. My niece, Angie, who has been so good about helping me and taking me places, uh, her aunt, um, her mother's sister, uh, had COVID, and she is okay, but her husband got it, and he right now is in the hospital in Monroe, and um, oh boy. he's been on a ventilator for about 12 days Ooh. now, and they wow. had to do kidney dialysis mm. yesterday because Ooh, his kidneys God. are failing. He has pneumonia. Ah. Mm. really yeah. bad shape mm. it seems like for a long time mm. we we didn't have folks that were close to us that mm. caught it but you know both sides of my family have been hit and several of gary's first cousins have had it and fortunately they all recovered but uh, what are you doing yeah, it's it's hitting closer to home. Be careful, guys. Yeah, well, and, and that's what I just said, Lincoln. You missed. Um, we really, really, really appreciate you setting us up uh, with on Zoom each week uh, because as much as we want to all be back together, and we miss being back together, and we miss the fellowship of everyone in our class, that we're going to need Zoom and. I don't know when. So. Well, yeah. It's available and it's uh, it's all ours and it's amazing how you, how the Lord made this happen because I have to use it for my business mm -hmm. and for my consulting and coaching business and I set it up so we got it. Oh, very good. We appreciate that. Anytime, yeah. anytime. Right. I'm just glad yeah. I'm able to. Thank you. Do something. Yeah. So are we. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There was somebody at Loganville first last Sunday in church who was diagnosed Monday or Tuesday with COVID. Yeah. Yeah. You think about if uh, people are being careless and carefree and they don't, they're not ab abiding with the rules and the guidelines. Mm -hmm. It's like breaking the Ten Commandments all over again. People just seem 
And I, I, we need to pray for this Thanksgiving weekend that people would be cautious and be smart and do the right thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think what's happening is right now in our society, to keep it short, there's a lot of people looking in the mirror, a mirror that we look in, that we do every day. We look in the mirror and a lot of people are asking why. Oh. Well, you know, this is nothing new, really, in terms of them wearing the mask. I think I shared with you back in 1982, I was in Taipei, and people were wearing masks on the streets. Well, I think most of our the Southeast Asia Asian countries have been wearing masks for years, and yeah. even in London, I mean. People there with the, especially those that have breathing issues, will wear masks. I see, I know people that lived there for years that it's just a part of life. Not yep. a life I want to live. This is why I don't live in those places. <laughs> Dolores, what, what's your niece's, Angie? What's her husband's name that's in the hospital? Uh, her husband is her uncle. His name is Larry. Oh, it's her uncle. Okay, and his name is Larry. Okay. Yes. Well, keep us posted, please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we all just had hope by now that it would be better. I think that's yeah. what, you know, we've gone through and gone through and gone through and thinking it would, it would do, that it would eventually get better. And I know I see lots of people with masks on and which was different from at the beginning. So I know a lot of people are doing the right things. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's why it's hard when we hear so many, we have such this such a surge, <sighs> although my son says it has something to do with the temperature. I don't know. I don't think anybody knows about this virus. I think that's the biggest problem is we don't understand it. And we think it's one way and then they say, it, no, it's another. And then they say, no, it's this way. Mm -hmm. And so it's a little confusing, but I think everybody's just weary. We're just weary with it. And, um, pray for the vaccines to be okay and we can get them and we can be protected. I don't know, you know, what do you do? Well, is the, is the time our faith is being tested. Mm -hmm. Our faith is being tested. And this is a time we're gonna to look to Jesus even more. Right, exactly. He has a plan in all of this. <laughs> and you know, his word is say, uh, he's not to harm us, to protect us, to bless us. And we got to trust in him. He has a plan and it's his plan that's going to happen. His will, his timing. And when he's ready, he's going to take it away. I mean, look at all the people in the Bible. How, how long did the Israelites stay in bondage? How many years? I was going to say, we'd have never made it through 40 years, would we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? Don't have the patience. So. Right. Uh, my, faith, uh, my faith in God is strong. I'm just tired of the virus. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know. I think it's hard because, uh, you know, you love your children and you just want to see them. And yeah, oh, geez, I don't know. But it's so, just, just the simple things. Have well, yeah, when we first started it, playing Thanksgiving, we were about the big stuff. It's the simple things, mm -hmm. the little things. When we yeah. first started talking about Thanksgiving a couple of months ago, there were going to be 11 of us here, but three were small children. And then this week, Robbie said, Mom, we just can't come because we think that we would be dangerous for you. So they were gone. And then her parents were going to come. So they're not coming. So now we're down to four and Bill and I, so we're going to have six. So we've cut everything mm -hmm. back, way back. We hadn't gone to the store yet. So I said, like, well, we don't need to buy all that stuff. But it's just hard because you don't know how many more times you have to have mm -hmm. Thanksgiving with your family, you know, mm -hmm. and I, as we get older. And so it was just sad. I've been a little sad since yesterday. I'm going to be okay. I'm not lost my faith, Kim, uh, Lincoln, but I'm just a little sad. Just it is sad, but I saw something in the paper yesterday and I thought that's the truth. It said, cut back this Thanksgiving so you can have a lot more Thanksgivings afterward. <laughs> that's true. Well, and I tell Robbie, we can always have Thanksgiving in January. We yeah. have a big dinner. We have, you know, if it gets better, we can have our turkey and everything in, in January. We'll, and that we'll be just have fine. a lot we can be to be thankful then. for. That's yeah. right. So it doesn't matter when we have it. It doesn't have to be. And I'm really usually right. pretty good about that, but it was just when he called yesterday, I got a little sad. Yeah. yeah you know, every day should be Thanksgiving Day for us. Exactly. That's right. right. So we'll have it whenever we can. 
Exactly. Well, I'm going to go ahead and open with prayer. We're going to go, uh, go ahead and get started. Um, uh, let's pray. Lord, thank you for um, a beautiful day. I thank you for this Lord's Day where we can worship together. Well, however distanced we are, we're still together. We're together in spirit and together in heart. Um, Lord, we pray for all those that we've heard this morning, those that are sick, both with and without COVID. Um, Lord, I just uh, especially want to lift up uh, Shannon Norville's uh, son uh, in the hospital with his uh, with a brain injury. Lord, just uh, lay your hands on him and the family with comfort and uh, and healing. Uh, please uh, guide me through this lesson, Lord. We're going to try something new, and uh, just uh, if it doesn't work, we'll wing it. We give you all the praise and glory in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Thank you. Carol. Bill and I are singing today, so in a little bit we'll get up and slip out to go to church. I understand. I was trying to get here. Time. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna. We're gonna see if this works. It's because, recording because yeah. you've made me the co-host, and you can go over at the bottom. It says share screen, and you can right. share your screen. And that's what I'm gonna do. So, do I just click on the share screen? Yes. All right. So you're not going to see me, and you're recording this as well. I am already recording, yeah. yes. I remembered. So here's the good part is I don't have to see me on YouTube or nor the 50 million other people that might run across this. But no. I'm, I'm going to try this PowerPoint. We will see what happens. If not, then everybody's going to see me. But that's okay. Uh, so I wanted to, um, I'm doing a couple of weeks, right, Cheryl? I've got two yes, weeks. Uh, this week, we're going to look at the hymn, Come You Thankful People Come. So um, we're going to see how that works. So you guys need to tell me if you see this. <coughs> you should see a PowerPoint. Um, did you click on share screen? I did, but Oops. I clicked on, okay, here we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. Cool. So, um, you know, our current and traditional Thanksgiving um, celebrations are rooted in early American historical narratives. Um, oh, let's see, this isn't going to let me just, there we go. On the early American um, historical narrative of the pilgrims uh, inviting um, the local Native Americans when they survived their first winter and they gave Thanksgiving uh, and praised it, Thanksgiving to God for, um, for helping them make it through that first winter. So Thanksgiving celebrations and harvest celebrations are probably centuries from the beginning of time. So around the world and across uh, centuries, ancient civilizations like the Greeks and the Romans, the Chinese and the Egyptians have all um, understood the need to express gratitude to their deities for the blessings of the harvest or for victories in war. Exodus 34:22 documents the establishment of the Jewish festival of, and I, forgive me if I say this wrong, so, it's the Feast of the Tabernacles. It's suck, suck it, maybe, or the Festival of Ingatherings. It marks the end of the harvest time as well as commemorating. It ended up morphing into commemorating the Exodus and the dependence of Israelites on the will of God. So these festivals were celebrated with song and dance and sacrifice and usually the first fruits, the firstborn lambs or calves and the first fruits of the harvest. So over the next couple of weeks, we're gonna be looking at Thanksgiving hymns uh, and the Bible teachings behind them. So let's see if this will play. Oh man, it's a YouTube, there it goes. Right. 
right, oh, okay. right, Carol, try right clicking on it and hit play. And maybe I'm not in the, because I embedded it in this so that it would play. Oh. And, well, and it well. played on my thing. Okay. This, if you've seen this before, this is an old MetLife <laughs> commercial uh, of Toe Brown and all the, the Snoopy and the gang and all singing, Come You Thankful People Come. And that is honestly the first time I ever heard that hymn. If, um, and for years, probably the only time I ever heard it. Um, so the hymn was written by Henry Alford, and this is a picture of him. But here's something he wrote in his Bible when he was 16. I do this day in the presence of God and my own soul renew my covenant with God and solemnly determine henceforth to become his and to do his work for, his, for as in me lies. And I'm thinking that's pretty determined words for a young boy of 16. I don't know many adults who would have that dare commit ourselves that strongly. And he came from a long line of clergymen. His father, his grandfather, and his great-grandfather were all ministers in the Church of England before him. He was raised in 1810 London, widely known as a man of gentle disposition, cheerful attitude, and actually a genius who reached the top of his profession in 1857 when he became the Dean of Canterbury Cathedral. It was reported that he was a man, uh, he was humble uh, and was grateful for the salvation offered through Christ's death yeah, and resurrection. Me too. He was very uh, versatile an artist, organist, singer, composer, and speaker. And his literary achievements included the completion of the Greek New Testament, a commentary of four volumes that took 20 years of hard work. The man was pretty amazing. You in? So in the fall of 1844, he wrote this song for the people of his first church in, and I cannot say this, Wimeswold, Wimswold as they prepared a traditional harvest home festival to celebrate the abundant harvest that season. Alford uses traditional language and imagery of the rural community to lend words of thankfulness for God's provision. And so there's the fir this first verse, just as the Israelites co were commanded in, in the book of Exodus to celebrate a festival of harvest, thanking God for his provision, this first stanza calls us to come together in worship, giving praise and thanksgiving to God for supplying our physical needs. I don't know many of us who actually go out and sow, sow seed and harvest a crop anymore. Some of y'all might have gardens, uh, maybe a little tomato plant here and there. But so even if we're not thanking him for a bountiful harvest of our own crops, we can fully recognize the great generosity of God's gifts and blessings in our lives, beginning with life itself. Even though during the most difficult times where we're at, we have much to be thankful for. So, and make note of these verses. Um, I'm gonna read a couple of them. Uh, Exodus 23, 16, or celebrate the festival of harvest with the first fruits of the crops you sow in your field. Celebrate the festival of in gathering at the end of the year when you gather in your crops from the field. And then Psalm 105, four and five, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. And here in the second verse, Alfred describes believers as God's own field, an illustration the Apostle Paul even used in 2 Thessalonians 2.13, when he said, we ought to always thank God for you, brothers and sisters, loved by the Lord, because God chose you as first fruits to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through belief in the truth. 
He calls you to this through our gospel that you might share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Each one of us is part of God's own harvest and the product of the seed of the gospel sown when Jesus came to do his work. Alfred Larson uses the visual of the, from the parable of the wheat and the tares in Matthew 13, and that he describes how joys and sorrows grow together in life, and that through those joys and trials of life, we can thank the Lord for walking with us through good times as bad and bad as we grow in our faith to become wholesome and pure before God. And then finally, the third and fourth stanzas uh, they continue the um, imagery of Matthew 13 um, uh, reference and move directly, moves actually moves directly into a, apocalyptic references as in Revelations 21 4, which I did not write down. So, Karen, do you want me to find it and read it? Please, please do. Okay, say it so, one more time. Revelations 21 4. Okay. I have the other ones. ones, but I didn't have that one. I'm putting it in this phone. Hello. Revelation. Okay. Revelation 21 4. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> he, he will wipe every tear. Is that it? Yeah. That's what's right. Because in the, yeah. Okay. He will wipe every tear. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. So those are, this is all part of, in my research, there were, um, there were some critics of these last two stanzas because they were so different from the first two, the first two being very thankful and harvest oriented and, um, uh, thankful for blessings and they didn't get the the third and fourth stanzas which there we go so for the lord our god shall come and take the harvest home which is actually referring to the church um, the, the church our believers all offenses purged away giving angels charge at last uh, in the fire the tares to cast, but the fruitful ears to store in the garner, which is like the bin, so safely. This, this is all referring to us, and we can put ourselves in that place and use, um, think of it in terms of when we're all in heaven at the end of days. Then thou church triumphant come, raise the song of harvest home. We'll be safely gathered in, free from sorrow, free from sin, there forever purified, in God's garner to abide. Come 10,000 angels come, raise the glorious harvest home. So these are all visualizations and uh, alluding to uh, the thoughts and revelations. Uh, and in 1 Thessalonians 4, uh, where the Lord himself shall come down from heaven with a loud command with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so will we be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. So as I read, um, I was doing uh, this research and I was looking at uh, the New Testament um, verses that had to do with Thanksgiving and the uh, Old Testament verses. I, th I, I saw kind of a, uh, a shift. So in the Old Testament, we have verses like in Leviticus where Thanksgiving offerings are presented to show a special appreciation. And in Deuteronomy, it's a time of deep thanksgiving for blessing you with a good harvest and thanking the Lord for his love continues forever in Psalms. And in Ezra, the praise and thanksgiving they sang because the foundation of the Lord was laid. So it, it felt like to me that the Old Testament thanksgiving was tied closely with praise for who God is and was 
and for what he has done. But in the New Testament, we have verses like, Give thanks to God for everything at all times in our in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Don't be anxious for anything. Give thanks. Uh, and whatever you do, whether in word and deed, do it all in the name of the Lord, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And rejoice in this. You know, how many of us have a problem with this? Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And then through Jesus, let us continually offer to God a, a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of the lips that openly profess his name. So to me, it felt like the New Testament um, verses uh, dealing with Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is a way of life. And we're supposed to give thanks in all circumstances. And the results of that is a spirit of generosity because we're thankful. We want to give to be to allow other people to be thankful and and to be thankful because we're able to give uh, that supernatural peace. When you give thanks in everything, you get a peace about what you're going through, even though you don't know the end result. And you don't understand all of it when you when you have that spirit of thank God He's in control. That spirit of thankfulness, we, there's a piece there that we don't have to be in control. And a victorious life and growth in faith and trust in God. So I thought that was kind of interesting that there was a, a shift in Thanksgiving, not just being a response anymore that in the old testament it's, it's a response but in the new testament it comes before anything even happens that to even be thankful for we're supposed to live in a thankful way even when we don't have anything that we that most people would say we didn't even have anything to be thankful for thanksgiving is a muscle to be exercised the more thankful we are, the more we'll have to be thankful for. And so that was actually very quick. <laughs> oh, yes. that, that took a lot harder. Um, took me a lot less time than I expected. So I'd just like to hear some insights. Thanksgiving, even in the hard times. Uh, Y'all have been gone through a lot more harder stuff than I have, especially this year. My life really has not changed that much. So, uh, which I am very grateful for, extremely grateful for. Um, but I know that that's not been the experience of most. Any input? Y'all are on mute now, so... <laughs> Well, I know in, in terms of uh, all this mess with COVID, um, um, the sad thing is, is one of the things I'm thankful for is my parents and David's parents doesn't have to go through this because taking care of uh, like, especially his mom in the nursing home and with, with the dementia, she got so, uh, I mean, I had noticed we had gone on a cruise so we were gone for a week when we came back, she was kind of like, who are you? And, you know, to live through that, through COVID and not be able to go see them because the nursing homes are closed. There are many things. My, my mom's been gone over 20 years now. There are many things that have happened in those 20 years that I have said to myself over again, I am so glad mom's not here to see this or to, to have to live with this, to deal with this. Okay. I mean, she is much better off. You, you know, when, when things are going well, it's easy to give thanks. Mm -hmm. But at the same token, sometimes we ignore. It's going so well, we, we take the credit for it. I worked hard, and I'm reaping the benefits of my hard work. I'm not recognizing that if it were not for Jesus, you wouldn't even have a work. Yes. To work hard. And Shakespeare once said, wrote, 
Sweet are the uses of adversity. We learn the most when we are facing adversity. And that's the time we have to depend on the Lord. Totally be dependent upon him. And to say, thank you for care. I'll never forget the footprints in the sands of time. Thank you for carrying me, Father, through these times when I couldn't carry myself. Yeah. I think even in the midst of being thankful, and I know when Bill and I have our prayer time, I'm always so thankful for all. I always say thank you for all that you're doing for us. Um, and thank you for Jesus. I mean, you know, there's so many things to be thankful for. It's easy if you just start thinking that way. And um, and I had a, a really good friend last week that I've actually had two friends recently that I went to high school with who just been so distraught. I mean, they are like having panic attacks. And uh, and uh, and because of that, one of them specifically has become um, angry because she can't see her kids and she feels neglected and um, and she wrote a really bad email, which I said, don't, why did you send that? But in the midst, in the midst of that, I said to her, she said, well, you're always positive. And I said, but it's a choice. Mm -hmm. You know, some days I don't feel wonderful, but I choose to be as happy as I can and to do as much as I can for others. It's a choice. And then I said to her, you have to be a rainbow, not a rainstorm. <laughs> I don't know where that came from, but I've asked my my net, my grandson to make a card, or like a painting, because he's the artist of the family, that says "Be a rainbow, not a rainstorm." And and in our in our days, when we are around people, instead of complaining and and being angry, um, we need to still think back and be happy for what we've got. Be a rainbow, you know. Bring when we see a rainbow, what's their natural reaction to that? Smile. We are thankful. We yeah. are happy. We rejoice. And when we see the rainstorm and it's storming and you're getting wet and the house is making the, all this noise, we tend not to be that way. So I, I don't know why that came to my mind for her. I said, jo, I said, just go around, make draw us all these pictures of rainbows and tack them on every wall in your house and think about being a rainbow. She said, I'll try. So I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, we have to choose to be happy in the midst of things. And, and I had my moment yesterday after talking to Robbie, I got a little cross with Bill and I was just frustrated, you know, that I couldn't see them and sad, but that didn't take <sighs> away my inner joy. That didn't take away the peace in my soul. Yeah. That didn't take away my thankfulness. It just meant God, I'm really unhappy because I think, can't see my grandchildren. And I think he understands that. Absolutely. And the, the, the point of it is that we don't stay in the rainstorm. Yeah. We come out and see the rainbow. And on that note, we have to leave for church. All right. Thank you, Janice. <laughs> Bye, Bill. St. Purdy. <laughs> In my um, Thursday morning Bible study with, with Susan Gerard, we've been studying various Psalms this, um, this fall that have to do with emotions. And um, Dolores, uh, I don't know. You were, were on the week we did number Psalm number 150, but it talks about just what you were talking about in in the New Test in, in the New Testament, Carol. Uh, Susan's note said we should praise God no matter what we through, so long as you have breath, praise God for who He is and what He does in any and every possible way. I got out Psalm 150. I, I, I use a different Bible for, for that Bible study than, than for Sunday morning, Sunday school. And Psalm 150, it just says about praising the Lord all the time. You know, we don't understand why we have COVID and, and why we're losing people and why people are sick and why we can't see our grandchildren and why we can't have a full table of folks for Thanksgiving. But God does. Well, and no. the wine, I mean, is the wine really important? And when I, when I, no. when people no. ask, you know, because then we're human. We ask that why question. Every bad thing that ever happens. There's an earthquake. Why did that happen? 
a shooting. Why did that happen? We all ask why. And really the why, th those are not questions we can ever get answers to. No. There's, there's think, no. think about when Job questioned the Lord. Yes. What did the Lord tell Job? Mm. Did you, you make know? yourself? Did you make, did you form the earth? <laughs> you <Did> know? You? <laughs> I remember when I was much younger, I used to ask why, but then one day I had this kind of revelation. I stopped asking why, and now I start asking, what are you trying to teach me? Yeah. Yes, yes. What, what are you it. trying to teach me, Lord? Because if I believe in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know you don't want to harm me. I know there's a lesson here to make me stronger. And to so show me, reveal the message. Yeah. I think sometimes we need to look around now and see what we still have to be thankful for. And maybe life slowing down a little was a good thing in yeah. some ways. Um, yeah. We have yeah. more time to think <laughs> about yeah. things. Did y'all get the email from? Um, Nepal? Mm -hmm. Yes. The pictures. Okay. And I'm showing it because I have uh, one of my co workers is the coordinator for the Red Cross Blood Drive. I knew she'd be interested in seeing those pictures. And she was freaking out because they're outside and there's no, you know, it's not sanitary and all. And I'm like, these people are giving blood. They have whatever little yeah. they have, they're giving. They're giving. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, that's that's thankful living. Mm -hmm. yes, I was in a, I was in a discussion yesterday where we discussed gratitude, and that's a different way of saying of giving thanks. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. one of the things we discussed was being grateful for the little things and living in an attitude of gratitude, mm -hmm. because then. When we give thanks for the more we give thanks for the little things, is the more we get so used to giving thanks that we don't even see. We always look for something to be thankful for, even in times like these. And when we look around, there, there is like we keep saying, there's a lot to be thankful for. There are so many of us who have been saved from this horrible disease. Yeah. You know, there are so many of our families who have not suffered from, from, from COVID. And, and one of the little things that we ignore is one of the questions that came up, how many of us do we, how many of us give thanks when we go to the bathroom? And every time I say this, I get a little <laughs> chuckle because we take it so much for granted. It's something that just yep. happens. And then somebody brought up um, the fact that they had been on missions missions fields yep. and, and have seen what people go through even yep. to go to the bathroom yep. and we come back here and and that was the person who was sharing we come back and we complain about not having this not having that you know I was on a on a tour and okay. and uh, some of us wanted to go to the away. bathroom and they came and back they and some people said don't go over there because it's just a hole you know, <laughs> and, and, and then there was one person who shared who had been on a mission yeah, who said she went in one take room. Out. It was everything in the one room. Um, the kitchen was in there, the living room, the and the bathroom was right in the same room, a whole. You know, we come back and we complain about little things, you know, the things we don't have. But there are so many oh, people. So many, so many, so many, so many, so many. So, it's, um, um, as I said, if we start giving thanks or being grateful for the little things, and when we live in an attitude of gratitude, what we found was that um, there's so much joy in our lives. We don't have time to worry about what's going on, you know, because so true. Yeah, yeah, we are grateful for yeah. the, the, the little good, good things that are going on in our lives. And if we look right. around, the sun is still shining. We can still go outside. And maybe we can't see our families, but we see, if we don't see our family and if we um, restrain ourselves, 
we can see our family later. Like yeah. Janice said, we can yeah. do it later. But if so many of us are thinking, oh, we have to see our families, then we might continue in this in this situation for much longer than we want to. Right, right. Thankful that even though you can't see them, you can communicate via telephone or text yes. or computer. Right. Right. Or, right. It's not like you're totally out of touch. That's right. so true. We need to train ourselves to notice and appreciate all the little things, don't we? Well, going, going back on, on the thing on the traveling, back in, well, 1974, when I was, we were, my family and I were visiting my cousins in Peru, um, and we got a chance to tour over in Cusco and to see what the really poor, the Indians live. You know, they live on little bitty shacks. There is no air conditioning. Um, you tell the wealth of the women by how many skirts she's wearing. You know, and you know they don't have sanitation. There is nothing. And when you, I mean, and the store shops, they they spread their wares on the ground. Yeah, you know, where the dogs are walking by. You know, you've got the bread spread on the ground when and dogs are walking by, peeing close by, and it's like, ew. Anyway, but that's how that I came back with a new appreciation that. Even here in America, people talk about being poor, but it is nothing compared to what's in Peru and some of these other third world countries. They have nothing. They have shacks, as in cloth hanging that protects them from the outside world. No heat. And uh, anyway, yes, yeah. much to be yeah. grateful for. Absolutely. Well, I know some of y'all might need to go to the 11 o'clock service, you know, Janice and Bill had to go. Um, you know, they're singing in the choir. That's why they had yeah, to go early. Yeah, they had to be there early. But, you know, I I was born in an Ajupa. An Ajupa is a hut. And the roof is covered with palm leaves. And the walls were mud. The floor was mud. The the bed we we slept on with me, my father, and my two sisters and me on the same bed growing up, and the mattress was made out of fiber. But we were so happy. And we did not have a stove. My mother cooked on a wood fire. I remember my father took an oil, an empty oil drum, and bored four holes and took two pieces of pipe and pushed it through and made my, an oven for my mother. And that bread was so good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we had an outhouse and, you know, we didn't have a shower. We had a bucket. Uh, we went into the well, a natural well and got water. But those, I remember those days with fond memories good times. We didn't have to worry about COVID. We didn't have to worry about, you know, we were out playing like children, freedom, free, free. You know, and when the neighbor's tree bore mangoes, they would bring some over for us. And, and mm -hmm. there was such a sharing mm -hmm. and, a, and, a, and a community. And the kids would call the older people, Mr. and Miss. And, and if you call an older person by the first name, you get a spanking. Yeah. 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 That's one thing you should, uh, should always be thankful for. Um, it looked um, as uh, we, you, know, you didn't have the internet back then. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to sound cynical, but sometimes, like you just saying, Lincoln, the old saying, Dale Carney says, when you're in a bad situation, think how it could be a lot worse. Yeah. Amen. So, yeah. Amen. And I'm going to say this, Lincoln, you're not that old, so it wasn't that long ago. So. <laughs> well, I, I remember. <laughs> I remember. But it's, you know, we had fresh fresh fruits. We could just climb the tree and pick the fruit. This is true. Yeah. Cheryl, I'm going to email you the PowerPoint and my notes and to send out with your class notes. Thank you so much. Everybody wants to. You know, remember there was the chorus we used to sing, count your blessings, name them one by yep. one. 
and it will uh, surprise you. Week's lesson is on. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Yes. Um, I did want to read something that I read that really is like, whoa, it's COVID in perspective. Um, and it says the most lethal virus for humans is not COVID at all. The most devastating virus that's been around since Adam and Eve is, anybody know what it is? Sin. That's the lethal virus. It kills more people than COVID does. Mm. We, I, we need to really draw close, depend on, and listen to God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Very good. Lincoln, would you close us? Yes, thank you. Father, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for all the blessings you have showered upon us, Lord. And thank you for the blessings that are to come, Father. We thank you. We believe and we will receive. Father, bless us as we go our separate ways. Bless this country, Lord. Speak to the leaders, Father. May they, be, may they seek your guidance and your wisdom and be obedient to your will, Jesus. And may our people find a way to be, to be together and live in peace and in comfort. And Father, protect us during these times from all evil, from all danger. And speak to the people who are being careless, Lord, and that they will be more careful, not only for themselves, but for those people who they will be around. Bless us, Father. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Michael. You're welcome. Thank you, Carol. Oh, thank you, guys. Happy, Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Y'all have a good Happy week. birthday. Can yeah. Come. Thank you. Bye, five, Bye. four, Bye. three, two, one.